Hi guys. In a previous video, I actually went over some teaching philosophy stuff and gave you a bit of a teaser given my own teaching philosophy, which is around a pedagogy of play and interactivity and um, doing and yeah, intrinsic motivation and fun, basically. In this video, I thought I'd give you some more information about teaching philosophies because there can be so many different types of teaching philosophies. Educators have different ways of talking about their teaching philosophies. Let's get started. There are plenty of theorists who have come up with understanding the way that people generally work in terms of their learning. These kinds of theories have evolved that include things like essentialism, constructionism, constructivism, conservatism, existentialism, humanism, right? So behavioralism. So all of these different isms, um, they actually indicate a different philosophy about how people learn and that's important for us when we are building our teaching philosophy if we can stand on the shoulders of giants who have already figured out some of that really tough philosophical stuff then we totally should now you can do some reading on each of these different philosophical underpinnings and you probably should if you want to use those terms so that you're clear on what the difference is between, for example, constructivism and behavioralism. But you don't have to have all of that stuff in your teaching philosophy. You can just begin a teaching philosophy with some common statements that tell the audience who you are as a teacher, what you value and what's important to you. And so the kinds of statements that you might say would be around things like, you know, that you create a student-centered learning environment and you do this through dot, dot, dot. Or you have a focus on active learning and the way that you create active learning or foster active learning is through doing X, Y, Z. You might have a philosophy of being a community engaged teacher or um, perhaps you set high expectations of your, of your learners and that this is important because dot, 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 and the way that you foster their capability to meet those high expectations is usually through terms like scaffolding, right? Like what we do to support our learners to make sure that they reach our expectations and reach their learning goals and the course objectives. You might also like to frame it in terms of things like holistic education, that you take a holistic approach to education or that you promote critical thinking. How do you promote critical thinking? There are various strategies and I have given in another film, I'll put the link down below, I've talked about how you can promote critical thinking in a lesson plan by getting them to do specific strategies, you know, specific learning tasks. Critical thinkers is usually what we want, right? We also might want creative thinkers. So what will you do to foster their creativity? And we want our learners to experience and to create culturally safe learning spaces. So how do we do that? What are we doing to foster that? That might be part of your teaching philosophy. Uh, another thing is uh, supporting authentic learning experiences. That could be core to your approach. So you would want to talk about how you support authentic learning experiences, what you do, why you think that's important. Okay, that's all for now. I just wanted to dive a little bit deeper into teaching philosophies and pedagogy. And um, again, wishing you all the best with your own philosophical teaching adventures.